we will just wait two more minutes to start. Uh, thank you everyone for joining both on-site and online. So just two minutes and we will be good to go. Okay, uh, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, I think actually we can start our session. Uh, so yeah, just uh, I would like to thank you very much for coming, um, especially uh, seeing so many youth people here. Uh, so just as a word of introduction, uh, I would like to quickly uh, explain you the idea of this session. So we have did something similar last year in uh, Poland at the IGF uh, forum there. And uh, we also gave a spot to the uh, different youth initiatives to present their current successes and their plans for the future and also to encourage uh, newcomers and uh, young other young people to join their work. So this year we wanted to do something similar, so hence the idea of this session we are having right now and uh, today with us uh, we are having uh, a very experienced young people uh, who are already successful leaders uh, who are very active in the internet governance forum and in um, in general in the field of new technologies different aspects of new technologies for a long time uh, so, firstly, I would like to uh, give the floor to Nicolas Fumarello, uh, who is a computer engineer, uh, graduated from the University of the Republic of Uruguay, and currently studying computer sciences at the same institution. And he is also a co-founder of Youth IGF Uruguay, an ISOC Uruguay chapter member, and also a member of Youth Coalition on Internet Governance. Uh, in he's the part of the steering committee and he will share some words about it. Hello everyone, welcome to our session. Hope you are hearing me well. Uh, my name is Nicolas Fimarelli. I am, uh, I am the bo board member of the Latin American and Caribbean region for the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance. Uh, well, uh, for all you that don't know what the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance is, is the natural space, it's a dynamic coalition at the IGF, and it's a natural space for all the young people to participate at the Internet Governance Forum. We are like articulators for the young people to bring their voices to the Internet Governance Forum and to bring their uh, participation to the Internet Governance Forum in, in a meaningful way. Um, some of the successes we have had this year, um, we, we have a very good group in the Youth Coalition this year because we, 
what we have people from uh, all of the regions around the world and uh, any of the of the participants or the bo board members of the youth coalition are youth ICF regional coordinators so it was a very good pleasure to to, to have this this year all, all these uh, people <laughs> in the group and well we we have had a uh, uh, at the beginning of the year, uh, an open call for workshop proposals for youth-led sessions at the ICF in order to bring these voices to, to, to more sessions at the ICF level. Uh, we, we have submitted uh, 13 sessions and 11 sessions were uh, accepted. So we are very glad that we have had uh, and are having in the next following days also some several sessions, so youth-led sessions uh, for the young perspectives to, to be here. And we also have a capacity building exercise with three webinars about the different uh, thematic tracks uh, of the ICF this year uh, and in the Global Digital Compact. Uh, we try uh, to be a preparatory exercise for these young people coming to, to the ICF this year. So very glad to be here with you. And I think we have a lot of, of discuss about what the future challenges for, for the youth in IC and what are the previous successes, right? With a lot of very good uh, expert panelists. And uh, as, as I'm also the member of the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance, I would like to uh, heartily encourage you to get interested in its work, especially that the next year there will be an opportunity to become the next uh, steering committee uh, members as we will have uh, the elections for the board. Uh, and with that, I would like to give the floor to another speaker, Veronica Piccolo from Youth Standing Group, who is the president of it, and who is the PhD candidate in law and economics from Ka Foscari University of Venice, and currently works at the European Commission. Uh, she's member of the 2022 Youth Dig Organizing Committee, the Youth IGF Italy, and also the Internet Society Italy chapter. So, uh, Veronica, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. It's nice to be here again. Um, so, uh, I would like to uh, quickly outline some of our uh, activities, some of the activities of uh, the youth standing groups. Um, also, explaining what we do because I feel that sometimes there is a, lo a lot of confusion with uh, the acronyms uh, where they we tend uh, to use. You know, YCIG, USSG. It's a bit confusing. You know. Um, so, uh, the Youth Standing Group uh, is the youth, the Internet Society Youth Standing Group um, is the group of young people uh, within the Internet Society and um, as such our goals uh, combine with those of the Internet Society and that means uh, to safeguard the robust and uh, safe and secure Internet uh, that is also made accessible to everyone. Um, additionally, the Youth Standing Group uh, has its own uh, objectives that um, are set by people that are usually between uh, 18 and 35 years old we also have members that uh, have um, more, uh, they are older than th the 35 years old, but we accept also membership from older people, uh, provided they also, um, you know, they tend to have or uh, sometimes meet our uh, our objective and, uh, and that means uh, that uh, they have to um, to be particularly proactive and encourage young people, um, young people participation and also, uh, you know, facilitate uh, their, their, their participation and engagement in internet governance issues. Um, there is also uh, some confusion. Uh, um, we uh, undertook uh, a transition uh, this year um, because um, the story of the youth sending groups uh, is a bit uh, complex. Uh, if you allow me, Emilia, uh, I would like to uh, to just quickly outline the history of the youth standing group and also explain one one of our uh, projects that we have uh, um, on ongoing. Um, so 
the youth sending group, um, the origins of the youth sending group dates back to 2015. Uh, when an informal organization called Youth Observatory was founded in Brazil. Uh, originally, it was formed uh, mostly by young people aged 18, 15, uh, 25 years old uh, from different countries of Latin America and the Caribbean. So it was a group born in Latin America and the Caribbean for young people from their region. The Youth Observatory was an initiative uh, born in the context of the Youth at IGF in 2015, thanks to a cooperation between the uh, a partnership between uh, the Internet Society and CGI.br um, to, you know, uh, foster the participation of young people in the area of, of discussion of Internet governance in Latin America and the Caribbean and was attended initially by one, 120 um, 20 young people from that region. The the year after, the, after in 2016, the Youth Observatory received the approval of the Internet Society to become a special interest group. And from that moment, it earned all the rights and duty that usually an Internet Society chapter has uh, funding, advice, uh, logistical support to achieve this goal. And uh, in 2022, and it, during this time from 2016 to 2021, usually the logo use, use SIG was always uh, combined with the logo of the Youth Observatory because despite having a, a common board, uh, they refer to two different organizations. Uh, but since this year, uh, since 2020, 20, Mm, from 2022, 20, uh, we, uh, the Internet Society uh, Board of Trustees, passed a, re a resolution which welcomed the standing group uh, of the youth, uh, a granting that a more permanent status uh, uh, than a special interest groups. And today, the YSG brings together around 2,000 members uh, from every corner of the group, regardless of their age. And uh, we have undertook a close collaboration with the YCIG, uh, whose members are uh, present on site, uh, Nicolas Fimarelli and Emilia. Um, and we have achieved so many things this year. Um, we have undertook together, you know, the working, um, the preparations of the working groups for, uh, to come up with the session for this IGF. We are carrying out together the mentorship phase uh, of the IGF Youth Ambassador uh, Program of the Internet Society. Uh, we are collaborating on the newsletters as well. And, uh, and so this is very important for us to, to find this uh, common field with other organizations uh, that uh, in order, you know, uh, to make the most out of, out of this, uh, you know, friendships and network that we carry out, uh, carry it out over time. One of the projects that, that uh, we are doing, uh, we are working on, it's called uh, Youth Atlas. Uh, so, uh, after the first experience of 2019, when the Youth Observatory mapped the participation of young people uh, who took the first step in the internet governance worldwide, the Youth Standing Group wishes also to further that effort. We want to understand what is the legacy that is left uh, by this first cohort of young people uh, who are now young professionals and in which direction the new entrants uh, entrance are moving. What keep attracting also young people into the internet governance? 
in the Youth Atlas of 2022, we want to sum up the impact of those young people who in the past two years have paved the way uh, to a new wave of young voices and, uh, you know, to understand where young people want to go to. So you may uh, uh, know uh, Joao, it's our vice, uh, vice president there, um, is currently in charge of carry out uh, some interviews uh, to young people present uh, on site in Addis Ababa. Uh, and uh, I know that he's very happy to hear this. Uh, so, um, so I'd like to invite all of you who want to be featured in the Youth Atlas to reach out to him and get their interviews because we want to know your voices. What your voices, were, what we will do with your voices is to, uh, to compact, to summarize all the interviews that we get into um, a paper-based uh, booklet a uh, paper-based magazine that we will distribute uh, next year uh, at the, uh, during the IGF uh, in Japan. Uh, so we will create uh, this, uh, this magazine with all the pictures and interviews and impact and opinion by young people and then, uh, you know, collects all of them and then, you know, distributes uh, this, uh, this booklet into uh, next year IGF. We will divide it, uh, this uh, booklet in two parts. The first part is what I is um, destined destined to what I call youth veterans, uh, who are young people who have been active in internet governance space for longer than three years. Uh, they have are the first uh, nucleus of young people who paved the way for us. Um, I can give you some names. Uh, Nicholas is one of them. Humut, you may be, you may have known. Uh, Elizabeth Showerman, she uh, she was the very person who promoted the first youth summit in Berlin. Uh, Jenna as, as well. While the second part is more for newcomers, we want to hear new voices of people that are actually interested and want to be part of the internet governance uh, and to hear their voices, what they think, what direction they want to, uh, you know, to follow. So get your interviews. Uh, I think it's also a fun activity to, uh, for those who are on site. While for those who are online, I will share our contacts uh, in the in the chat. And uh, if you wish uh, to be featured in the Youth Atlas, you can reach out to us. Uh, you can either volunteer to be the journalist, so to carry out the interview, and or to be interviewed. And you know, um, I hope that, uh, that some of you are interested in this project and you will help us out uh, on this. Uh, thank you very much, Veronica. And if somebody hasn't seen, uh, Joao is next to me. So this is the person uh, who you can reach out to. And now I would like to introduce our next speaker, who is Athena Vasilopoulos from ITU Generation Connect Group, and who is currently finalizing her uh, Master uh, Studies in Management of Digital Transformation of Organizations at um, HEC Montreal by carrying research on the obstacles and drivers of AI chatbots in the context of access to justice in collaboration with the Cyber Justice Labo Laboratory of Montreal. Uh, she recently started working at the European Commission as a Blue Book, uh, Blue Book trainee uh, in the Rectorate General for Informatics, uh, and she also has her own podcast, which is called Teaching Time. Athena, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Emilia, for this brief uh, introduction. Um, I hope you can all hear me well. Um, so I'll start by introducing you to Generation Connect. 
So Generation Connect is uh, ITU's youth strategy. And for the ones who don't know about ITU, it's the International Telecommunication Union Agency, hence ITU. And uh, there are five different regional groups uh, part of this um, youth strategy, and namely one for the African continent, the Americas, the Commonwealth of Independent States, the Arab group, and the Europe group that I'm part of and that I will be talking about. All of this group aim to engage global youth and encourage their participation as equal partners along the side of the leaders of today of digital change, empowering young people with the skills and opportunities to advance their vision of a connected future. But what does that mean concretely? And what do we do in the Europe group? Um, well, firstly, it's important to say that uh, while ITU is the oldest UN agency, Generation Connect is only two years old. So it's a work in progress. In the first year, uh, the group worked on a declaration which established the regional priorities for Europe towards 2025. Uh, I'll share it in the chat afterwards if someone is interested. And in the second year, which is the year when I joined, we worked on the Generation Connect European Digital Youth Jam, uh, where we, we discussed our declaration, but also topics such as capacity development, policy, regulation, cybersecurity. And I would actually like to say that this is how I met Veronica. Um, but a big milestone that um, happened when I was part of it was actually the Generation Connect Global Youth Summit uh, in Kigali in Rwanda last uh, June, which we concluded on our uh, call to action, which was a two-year consultation which aims really to enhance youth, um, youth engagement building in what we like to call an inclusive and sustainable digital future through the participation uh, within the participation of youth in government and wider UN system. And we aim to include this call in the results of the World Telecom different, uh, Development Conference. But as certain member states opposed, uh, this is also an example of uh, the limitation that we faced as a young initiative, which is really trying to push uh, for young people to be part of the decision making process. And uh, this is also something that we would like to address, which is going past the stage of generating meaningful content, but actually making sure that we can implement it and we can actually be um, part of uh, the decision making processes. We're currently restructuring a bit the group because um, basically uh, Generation Connect is, um, for the Europe group at least, is up to 25 year olds. So if you are below or 25, I really encourage you to uh, sign up or reach out to me or to actually other youth envoys which are present uh, today in Addis Abeba. Hello, Max. And um, feel free to talk to them. You will get much more insights. And um, in this uh, call for new members that we will soon open, I think around January or February, I really encourage people to, to join, uh, but not only because it would look good on their CV, but also because they're trying to bring a meaningful contribution to the table. Maybe you have a very interesting field of expertise, like our group is very diverse. We have people with a very strong technical background and people who have a less strong technical background, but who are just as relevant around the table. And, uh, but as long as you come with a meaningful contribution and you have a vision for what you think um, this could be, well, uh, please come and, uh, and share it uh, with us. Um, the restructuring that we're doing is also organized around three pillars. So policy, promotion, and partnerships. Um, they're all a bit interlinked at the end of the day. Uh, and we have regional priorities, which are capacity development, policy and regulation, cybersecurity, environment, and digital inclusion. Um, so if any of what I said sounds like it could interest you, please don't hesitate to reach out to me, whether it's on LinkedIn or online, wherever you find me, uh, or at other uh, Generation Connect uh, youth envoys who are present in Addis Abeba. Thank you very much. Thank you a lot, Tatiana. Uh, I think that Generation Connect program is something very good for newcomers to get more involved into the internet governance as Athena presented, there are a lot of activities to get active in. Also, I will keep pointing at people. You can find Max here. He's in a green t-shirt. He's smiling right now. Uh, who can tell you more? You can also ask Athena in the chat. 
uh, if you would, uh, if you are interested in joining uh, the Generation Connect group. And now I would like to introduce the next speaker, who is my colleague from NASC, Piotr Słowiński. Uh, he is a cybersecurity expert at uh, our National Research Institute, focusing on legal and strategic analysis of cybersecurity. Uh, he's also a PhD candidate in law um, concerning cybercrime and cybersecurity at the University of Warsaw. And his prior professional experience includes cybersecurity, cyber threat, and strategic analysis from the military perspective. Uh, Piotr, the floor is yours. Thank you, Emilia. I hope that I can be heard well all across the room. Uh, as you have introduced me, I am the representative of NASC National Research Institute. And, um, well, when it comes to Poland, the NASC is, um, has played a vital and important role in promoting the youth-oriented programs in IG and cybersecurity. Uh, we have an experience in cyber policy, children online protection, cyber hygiene, uh, cyber trainings, uh, and thus it's why we were able to promote the youth-oriented programs uh, well, and we were able to promote the, the, the best, I think, the, the most active, uh, which uh, the most active organization, as the media can, uh, of course, uh, con uh, confirm it, the Youth IG of Poland. Uh, it started in 2020 in cooperation with NASC and has dynamically acted in the field of uh, internet governments and, well, at some point it evolved even into a vital part of now Polish cybersecurity ecosystem uh, when it comes to youth engagement. And as the, the most representative uh, action is uh, for me and I mean may, maybe for most of you here, uh, it could have been observed during the last IGF in Katowice in Poland. Uh, a lot of a lot of sessions were organized. Uh, I don't want to dwell into details because Emilia would certainly co uh, correct me on this one. Uh, I would certainly mistake all uh, all the numbers. But the 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 sessions were enormous success. Uh, I can I, I can vouch for that. Um, and therefore, what should be also viewed as a success is the fact that this main goal of Youth IGF Poland was achieved. So to create an open forum. Uh, of exchange um, of experience and ideas between the youth and the experts from different regions and backgrounds. I think it was achieved uh, uh, in, during Poland's IGF. Uh, I am in this privileged position, as also Emilia mentioned. Uh, as Emilia is my colleague. We work in the same team. And she's the best example of how being a gifted and hardworking person and also participant in this case of Polish and international youth-oriented programs uh, can pay off and transcend into professional cybersecurity career. She's like the best example of that. And uh, I'm really proud to work with her. And uh, I, w I was really glad to know of all the various, uh, various initiatives worldwide because of her, and I have I had the pleasure to know all the uh, initiatives around the world from Africa, from South America, from North America, and this this feeling that the local initiatives are being a part of global network is uh, is on both international and national level is uh, can have an immense impact from my perspective. Uh, this can shape the areas of IG and cybersecurity. Um, in, and create the platforms, the further platforms to cooperate between the experts and the youth, which is also very important in my, in my, in my, from my point of view. And from the perspective of NASC as an institution also, uh, it creates chances and enables us to, uh, to, well, to support, help, or just, um, well, maybe it's not like we are guiding them getting them through, but we are supporting young people in transition to professional careers. So we are offering traineeships, we are offering uh, employment then, but we wanted to also include them as much as possible and provide them with resources to really turn their passion, their channel, their passion, their ideas into a meaningful, real, uh, meaningful uh, initiative such as IGF in Poland, so the big international event. And uh, I think this is the most important thing when it comes to well, youth-oriented programs in which 
institutions such as NASC, so the nationwide institution can help and support youth in various countries. Thank you very much. Mm, thank you a lot, Piotr. Uh, I am a little bit intimidated, but you are very kind words. I think you are too kind. And also, uh, Piotr, I think, is too modest about himself because he is the best example uh, how <laughs> he is the best example of how uh, somebody so young could be so already experienced expert in the cybersecurity. Like uh, he's really a great. Uh, colleague to have in the team and who is always eager to share his big experience with the, the younger uh, teammates like me. Uh, so with that, uh, I would like to get to our next speaker, Malako Hailu from Model African Union, who holds a uh, Bachelor uh, of Sciences in Soci Sociology and Social Anthropology mm -hmm. from Unity University Ethiopia and who is also the founder and executive director of Model African Union Ethiopia, uh, which is a youth-led initiative he will to uh, tell us more about uh, soon, uh, with aim of domesticating the agenda 2063 and SDGs at the grassroots level through simulation conferences that will empower and assist young people. Uh, he's also a Nasser Youth Fellowship, Arab Cent Africa Youth Platform alumni, Youth for Human Rights Inter International uh, Advocate, African Leaders Malaria Youth Al Alliance Champion, EU Delegation of, uh, to Ethiopia Youth Sounding Board, and a lot of many other <laughs> outstanding accomplishments. So, Malaku, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Malaku uh, from uh, Ethiopia. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, welcome for all you that you came in here uh, because uh, I would appreciate that you have a lot of time that you invest when you come in here, the time and knowledge. Uh, so I would like to appreciate on behalf of our government as well as on behalf of as a use of Ethiopia because uh, I think no one is than this one but i would like to appreciate but uh, it's a good opportunity like to have you all uh when you come to me uh, i'm melaku and uh, the model african union uh, founder and executive director uh before i speak about model africa union ethiopia uh the the technical team will show a little bit videos a one minute video and what i'm working on on it and also so that i we can discuss i think it's going to be learning to each other thank you so much Every African has a right to proper health care, good food and nutrition, and good quality of life. African countries, in the implementation of their national priorities under Agenda 2063, have made commitments to eradicate poverty in our generation, build inclusive and sustainable economies with shared prosperity for all, through social and economic transformation by focusing on the following areas sustainable and inclusive economic growth that reduces poverty and leads to increased income levels, equality and decent jobs, value addition in agricultural products and growth of agro-business and industries, human capital development, skills revolution in science, technology and innovation, gender development, youth empowerment, and employment generation for youth and women. Social security and protection for all people and infrastructural development. Good governance supported by capable institutions. Manufacturing-based industrialization. Promotion of culture, arts, and sports. Peace and security. Let us unite to build the Africa we want. Visit www.au.int to learn more about Agenda 2063. Thank you. Uh, that I think. Four. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, that you. I think you hear something about before I talk because uh, something has come in your mind uh, related to the what we are doing. I mean, what we. What I'm here about to speak about it. So uh, uh, it's called Model Africa Union in Ethiopia. So what we do is like uh, uh, the Africa has its own agenda which is the, for the, ne the next 
50 years. So it was launched in 2013. So the first phase was already uh, going to be in uh, 2023. So uh, uh, in that, there are uh, in the agenda 2063, there is seven aspirations, and one of the aspiration is uh, the six. Uh, se six and seven is mainly focusing on the w user and women. So the women and the user are the one who uh, implement this agenda. So in the in the agenda, there are a lot of things mentioned, as you heard about uh, from the videos, uh, decent work and uh, creating a job for the youth and the cyber security as well as peace and security. So uh, the Peace and Security Council of the African Union has uh, also uh, some departments uh, in related to cyber security and also the African governance and architecture. So this architecture is mainly focusing running to the internet governance and also uh, uh, controlling the the, the, the cyber issues of the in the continent. So uh, that's why we I, I came to to speak on behalf of uh, this uh, agenda. So uh, it's not only that we made uh, domesticating uh, we domesticate the uh, SCDGs. So uh, in related to our objective. So in the organization of the model African Union. So uh, as you all know, the SCDGs are 70 goals. But uh, if we are not working as a partnership. So uh, we not to be like uh, b because this uh, the agenda 2063 is aligned to with the SCDGs. So if we implementing to the uh, the SCDGs, it means that we are implementing the agenda uh, 2063. So uh, that's why we are trying to uh, speak. So in related to our when you come to in the in our. Uh, uh, model. So our model is the second model in the continent. So the African Union is the one is uh, on behalf of the African Union we launch. So uh, in the uh, on behalf of youth division. So currently it's it's called uh, it's restructured the uh, the commission. Uh, the name is called uh, Women and Gender and Youth Directorate. So uh, the, this the, this department is the one who leads uh, to be this uh, our initiative to be go forward uh, not we are not working on ethiopian use as well uh, we work to the entirely to the african uh, use uh, and also it's diasporas as you all know the diaspora is the six regions uh, for for those who are uh, loved to ethiopia i mean love to the, uh, the african and also african cultures and heritage so you are also the third, uh, the six regions of this uh, this uh, uh, the African Union. So uh, it means like uh, when I say regions is like, as you all know, we have East African region and uh, North Africa and West Africa and Central Africa and South Africa. But the diaspora is uh, the one who is educated the more and the one who has the finance and the one who has the knowledge and experience and uh, to share to us. So if we neglecting this, uh, this entirely group, so Africa will not to be uh, uh, to achieve her own agendas as well as the SCDG. So, uh, so the youth are the one uh, responsible to be uh, to implement this agenda. So that's why, uh, as a model Africa Union, we're entirely working on an uh, age of uh, 15 to uh, 35 uh, in related to the Africa Union organs. It's like I mean, uh, when we come to dividing to the. The, the, the age groups, uh, the UN is already like, it started from 30 to 29, and but uh, the, the African Union also, uh, when it's mentioned that the age group is like uh, 18 to, or I mean, 15 to 35. So uh, whatever it is, but uh, we are uh, other youth groups. So if we neglecting this, uh, the main uh, age group, so uh, Africa cannot to be to achieve her own agendas as well as uh, her, uh, the SCDG goal. So when we mention, uh, let's see, related to our work. So, uh, you know, when we engage, there is called African Union uh, Youth Initiative. Uh, this initiative is called, uh, it was launched, the first African Union Youth Involved. It was launched, uh, it was appointed by the, uh, the his Excellency Musa Faki, the, the Commission of the African Union in 2018. So it was a three, I mean, four pillars, uh, uh, this uh, uh, initiative has a p four pillars. Uh, the first pillar is like uh, four E's. It's called education, engagement, entrepreneurship, and uh, and employment. So uh, we entirely model Africa Union is working on those areas because when we do the models, we raise a lot of uh, committees of the Africa Union. So when we uh, related to the, uh, the this conference, uh, we focus uh, previously. I mean, before ten days ago, we host the. 
the simulation conference in related to uh, climate change and COP27. So the outcomes was mainly the use to have uh, more ideas on related to climate and the digital world because uh, we are, uh, I mean, uh, the current, the priority issues of in the world it is climate. So they used to come up how the climate to fight, uh, to fight this, uh, I mean, climate and technology, how it is related to, so related to be uh, solved so that's why the use have uh, coming with the four resolution the main provision on behalf of this one so uh, we would like to thank to the ECA as well as to my colleagues uh, my my partners from uh, the UN Ethiopia uh, we would like to thank for the simulation conference that you engage in the use and so uh, this is the first one that we the, not the last but the, the uh, entirely it was a recent uh, project that we do. So uh, related to the engagement, so they used to have a more, uh, maybe they will, uh, when we have uh, making to the Peace and Security Council of the African Union, so they used to, to, to talk about, uh, they will simulate each country, so the African Union, as well as the UN uh, NGOs, uh, for example, if we uh, simulating to the the, the African Union uh, Peace and Security Council. So uh, it has its own uh, simulation procedures as the UN has, but uh, the youth have a voice because most of the time the, our leaders or uh, I, I don't know, it, it, it will not to be Ethiopia, I mean, more Ethiopian or uh, Africa. So it might be include inclusivity to the world. Lead, uh, our leaders, they're not giving opportunities for the youth. So I, I, I uh, due to that, that's we creating this, uh, these models. They used to, uh, to have their own space and so that they can keep their own talks and also how they can come up with the zero resolution to solve those problems. So uh, that's why the model uh, is uh, working on it. So, uh, sorry. Uh, when I uh, connected with the SCDGs, as I told you, the model, our model is uh, is not uh, just is not a is not a club. It's it's is not a club as the MEUN. It's 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 uh, it, it's a, a youth based initiative that works peace and security, gender equality, and also African culture and heritage, and also it's. Uh, uh, sorry, it's not bad. So, Rio de Garro. No, no, no. You can, you can pass. Pass it, pass it. So, I, I would like to connect uh, the our model that we domesticated the Agenda 26, no, the SCDGs, so with the three pillars. So, as you all know, the SCDGs are the three pillars, the social, economic, and uh, climate. So, we mainly focusing on the, as a, uh, uh, in our in our model, we mainly focusing the the social and uh, econ uh, econ environmental. So when we are uh, seeing the social facts, so uh, there are SCDGs, for example, SCDG five four. Pass it down. Pass, pass. So. Uh, Yeah, this is economic. Uh, this is the eco. The, this is the eco e economic one. So you see the SDG one. Uh, so the poverty and the zero hunger and also sustainable, uh, in sustainable city and uh, eco com community and also the decent work and economic growth, and industry and innovation and uh, infrastructure. So when we talk about these things, so these are mainly uh, economical. Uh, aspects of the the one we do. So uh, when we do to the pass, pass, pass. Sorry. so the short, the social aspect. This is the main the the main agenda of the our aim is I mean, our uh, our model is working focusing on this one. So uh, health, uh, you know, the, 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 we are living in a digital era. So uh, we we should have uh, science and technology to create. Uh, to fight uh, some of diseases, for example, uh, as you all know, the non communicable diseases are the one who has affected our continent and also even in Ethiopia, most of the people are who are dying with the non communicable diseases. So to, 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 to prevent these issues, they used to come up with the digital uh, instruments and for example, a measuring to uh, maybe uh, diabetes or hypertension, other things. So they, uh, the Ministry of Innovation and uh, 
uh, innovation of science and technology of Ethiopia has uh, creating a platform uh, since the, the, the childs are uh, to have uh, to participate in different in, in, in innovation activities. So education is the most part, as, as you all know, because you, uh, when we are in, in the world age and we are also in, uh, in a city, but most of the people are living in rural areas. And uh, when, if you come into an example of Ethiopia, uh, previously and 10 years ago, it's like 50%, one, one 5% of uh, the people are living in urbanization, but 85% uh, uh, of the, the farmers, so the, the rural people are the ones who are affected uh, with the education. They don't have a knowledge on uh, digital world, even internet internet is not accessed there so we uh, so uh, to 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 avoid these challenges the those uh, users who are learned here in the cities in a different regional cities so they they can go them uh, their the, the 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 village where they born and so that they can uh, they can uh, they they go and they teach them, they teach their their uh, ancestors or their families so uh, that's why the mainly we focus in education and qualities and as i as I told you, peace and security is the big issue. So uh, this is the that's why we are here, and uh, we're talking about the internal governance. So uh, it's in related to that, there are uh, justice and also uh, a lot of things will be affected. So that's why we mainly focusing on this. So uh, reg as I told, uh, uh, why we focus also the reduction and gender equality because uh, as I told you, the agenda 2063 is an aspiration six. It's uh, mainly focusing the women and the youth. So. This shows that why we said the use of the women are who are uh, implementing this agenda there to make the women and I mean the use uh, in, to show to show up the inclusivity of uh, the to, for implementation. So uh, that's it. Uh, I mean that's all about for the uh, social social inclusion. Uh, the last but not the least, we are living in, in a big world and also uh, the globe is coming to us as a ball. So we all are to be to touch on that ball. So we need what? A partnership and inclusivity and working together as a stake as a group or as a team. So if Melaku is working on those areas, so if anyone who's like to interest and to work, as I told you, we are not a local based. I mean, we are not... Uh, uh, mostly in a work uh, local and we are regional and we are also uh, national and global so that's why we the most of the youth they don't have a clue about the agenda 2063 as well as uh, the SDGs. if you want to go uh, i mean you can ask someone around here or uh, those who are not coming from outside so ask someone a, a, a use and how many SDGs are, are they and also uh, tell us like two or three. So uh, that's why we are trying to engage in the youth and uh, to be uh, educated and uh, to, to participate in uh, national and global aspects of uh, the agendas. Thank you. If you have a question, you are welcome. Uh, thank, oh, thank you a lot, uh, Malaku. It is absolutely great that being here in Addis, we could hear an insight from somebody local and to learn more about the current uh, situation here. And also, uh, I think there was a lot of useful information and useful facts. So thank you a lot for sharing them. Also, there will be time for questions uh, just uh, in a few minutes. I would like to ask if we maybe have Yochi Ida with us here in the room. Okay, still not. So right now we will uh, proceed to the questions part. Uh, so um, if you have any questions uh, on site, please raise your hand or online, please write them in the chat. I will quickly ask uh, Jenna, our online moderator, if there are any questions already in the chat? Uh, we currently do not have any. Um, thank you for making me co-host. We don't have any questions yet. But for remote participant, please feel free to drop your uh, question in the chat. We'll keep it as in, into the queue. And if we have uh, enough time, we may ask you to, yeah, we'll bring it to the discussion okay. table. Thank you. 
Thank you a lot, Jenna. So do we have any questions here or maybe some of you would you would you like to share something about your initiative? Okay, I see the hands rising up. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, hello. Can you hear me? Uh, my name is Sridhi Brahimaji. I'm from Nepal. Uh, my initiative name is Learn IG, Internet Governance. Uh, so with Learn Internet Governance, what we do is we develop toolkits. Uh, we develop toolkits for, uh, you know, ICANN. We have developed newcomers toolkit for ICANN. We have developed newcomers toolkit for APRIGF, uh, as well as, uh, you know, other fact-checking things, stuff like that. So I strongly believe that, uh, you know, the, the, the whole youth engagement part is very, uh, it's very dynamic as well as very difficult. And uh, this topic is, is, you know, I'm very passionate about, about youth leadership. Why? Because, uh, you know, when I started in 2007, you know, we, we, I used to stand up and I used to be looked at uh, as if I, I was uh, nobody. So from then and there, I realized that, uh, you know, we, we need to work on our skills. We need to work uh, on, on making people, uh, you know, especially from Asia, we have to work on, on, on their uh, level of, um, you know, um, skills. So, so, so then and there, um, you know, I, I started engaging uh, with Diplo, then, then Internet Governance, uh, Internet uh, ISOC, and then, you know, I was involved with NRI uh, and then all these organizations. And, and what, you know, what, what uh, these days what I've realized is, you know, uh, with youth engagement, uh, what, where are we going? I, I mean to say, you know, youth is such in a vulnerable state right now that we 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 have to focus our 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 energy in 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 values you know that is very important if youth uh, are given the right values they can stand right they can do things right uh, they will be leaders right and that's what we uh, we believe in and we support in and, and even in, uh, in Nepal, we, we have been, uh, you know, we, 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 we do uh, reach out to uh, colleges and schools. And, and it is so that, uh, you know, uh, I'll share you my experience that, you know, uh, I, I went to a college, there were like 70 students, and I did a, a fishball session. And uh, till the break, there were like 30, 30 left. And, and it was a one hour session, and I, within the half an hour, 30 were like gone, 30 were left. <laughs> and uh, and out of the 30 till the time we ended uh, we had around 10 or 15 people and out of those those 70 uh, youth one girl wrote a blog about it so that is the level of engagement you know we get that is a reality and we have to accept that and uh, and it is it it is more like you know we we have to further work on on the value system transparency accountability and, and, and these are, are more, uh, you know, uh, issues uh, that, that we have to focus on so that when they, when they come out as leaders, uh, they, 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 they will be standing with a standard form uh, of, of, you know, collaborating with the communities. Because a lot of the times what I've seen is, uh, you know, I've seen you know, IGFs that are being run just for the sake of it, right? So, so I, I strongly believe that, you know, youth, youth, youth uh, values and youth uh, uh, you know, engagement and youth initiative have to be uh, you know, more, more focused uh, towards uh, the whole uh, engagement part, more focused. Because this, today's world is the world of opportunity, right? Have a look, you have mobile phone, you have internet, just go on, share your information, click it, put it on the web. Done, man, it, was, it is so easy. I mean to say, was it possible back then Right? You have the knowledge. Go on, talk with the students, talk with your friends. You know, that is what engagement, real engagement is. It doesn't take money. It doesn't take uh, you uh, uh, to be different. It just takes you to be passionate. And that passion comes from the values. You know, th those are the values that we have to infiltrate. Those are the values where we have to work on. And, 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 and that, that is like, you know, uh, to some extent, 
you know, even us, we focus on that. I, I have a booth there in uh, IJF village, and I met a lot of the African people, and, and a lot of the leaders came in, and, and we talked. And I felt that, you know, I, I felt very passionate of, with people, that they, they share their stories, they, 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 they want to be themselves. And, 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 and at, at the time, it's just, it's just, they are just this, 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 uh, you know, far away. The ice has to be broken. You know, you just have to click. And, 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 and you know, like, I, today I, I encountered, like, a lot of the people came in, in, in our booth. And, and, you know, like, a lot of people got motivated. And even I got motivated when, 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 when there were uh, students that they shared that, you know, like, we are doing, trying to do this. We are, we are like, trying to, uh, you know, run this. We are trying to collaborate. And it's so interesting. And I think this is the platform where we have to collaborate. It's not about Asia, it's not about Africa, but how we are going to bring in learning from all these leaders, learning from our skills. It is very important that we collaborate. That's the key. And thank you. Thank you a lot. I think it was an excellent input to the discussion. Uh, do any of our speakers would like to comment? I um, so um, I totally agree with. Um, I, I don't remember the name. I know just that uh, from Nepal. Sridip. Um, Shidi. Sridip. Sridip. Okay. Um, so um, I totally agree with uh, with you in terms of uh, of collaboration and uh, sometimes with that we have to push push beyond our intention. Uh, so what we are noticed um, in the youth standing group is uh, sometimes when uh, when the work gets harder, uh, we start losing people. Uh, it happened uh, when we carried out the working groups uh, to, you know, to, to develop proposal, uh, session proposal for the IGF. Um, when at the beginning uh, we had a, a lot of people coming into the working groups and uh, starting to, uh, they, they wanted to be part of the sessions per se, but then nobody was actually writing uh, the proposal. So uh, we, in the end, we had, at the beginning, we had a lot of people willing to participate, but in the end, we just had people who wanted to be moder moderators, who wanted to be rapporteurs or speakers without actually contributing to the substance of the content of the session. And that is very important to keep the focus of the people on the substance of the thing and not, and not just the appearance. You know, we, the, the YCIG and the youth standing group have brought a lot of session in this IGF, uh, but it's been a lot of work to manage all those people, all those proposals. And Nicolas, Emilia knows that very well and Joao, Joao is there as well. And we have worked the night uh, to deliver our proposal. And we, we know that many young people don't want to, you know, <laughs> to do the, the dirty job, to stay late at night. And it is very difficult to find people that are really motivated to stay in this ecosystem and to work hard on that. Um, so you can only see the appearance, the results, the discussions, the engagements, but be behind that, there's been a lot of work and we keep doing a lot of things without nobody seeing what we do. So it's very important that we also, as a young people, we keep in consideration we, we are also students, we are young workers, we are, we are finding our way into the, uh, the market jobs or things like that. And, you know, some people, they do this only to put, uh, to put this in the, into their curriculum, but then they don't, do not actually contribute 
to the activities of the, of the organization. So I agree with you that uh, we need to foster, you know, to push, um, to push our engagement, our commitment, but sometimes it requires people that are motivated to do that. And it's very difficult to find that. Yes, uh, thank you. It was uh, it couldn't have resonated more with me what you said, and yes, well, I wanted to say that it's a kind of advice. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's not my position to give an advice, but uh, I would say that the discussion should be as inclusive as possible. And what I what I understand uh, as the, as the inclusive uh, in this in this subject, I would say that regardless of our status. I mean, whether we're youth, whether we're we should be uh, allowed to, uh, and we should not be afraid to openly and freely discuss projects, ideas, initiatives, and to, and what is more, I would say that we should be able to question, as youth, for example, question authorities, question the knowledge of an expert, because they are not omnibuses, they don't know everything, and we should be able to do that. Of course, I'm not, this is not a call for being arrogant. But let us just be ambitious, confident, courageous, bold, and well, let us not agree. Let's let's disagree in some cases. And to me saying this, that I agree with you, it's, it's quite, quite funny, but let's disagree in some cases. Let's discuss the cases, let's discuss the ideas and initiatives. Let's, let, let us do that. I would like to add something. Uh, you know, uh, the thing that you said is completely right. Uh, you know, the, the whole whole thing is, you know, IGF is in English. The whole proposal thing is in English. You know, we have the barriers here. How many of us can speak proper English? That is the thing that we have to lobby. We have to make it clear to the MAG that, you know, we come from different communities. You know, it, it, is, it, is, it has to be inclusive in such a way that youth has to be given the chance to speak their voice. You know, only people coming, experts coming, you know, leaders, youth leaders are leaders of today, not tomorrow. We are leaders of today because we have the challenges, we have the problems, right? Having said that, you know, it, 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 it is, it is um, I completely agree with you, you know, it's a voluntary job. You, you don't get the, uh, always get the good point on, you know, doing all the work, saying, you know, pe people do criticize you all the time, but, you know, it's the passion, you know, it's a change. That that is what is meaningful, and and you know I, I I see all of you standing looking at me with that glaze in your eyes, and that is what is important, you know. Because if we don't step in, if we don't uh, you know put in our effort, things are not going to change, right? Things are not going to change. We have to do it, you know. Whether they want it, whether they don't want it, we have to push it so that things will for tomorrow there will be a better, uh, you know, system. There will be a better, it is our fight, it is my fight. Though I'm not a youth, I've crossed 30, 35, but I'm with you because, you know, I, I realize I want the leaders to come in. I want the leaders to come in and talk about their issues. IGF is such a beautiful place that, you know, you can come, you can talk about your issues. I tell that to all the, you know, I've been a mentor for a lot of the uh, organizations, ICANN, uh, you know, APR, IGF, I've been, been a mentor for APSIG, I was a general secretary. So I, I always say, be smart, be visible, come prepared and talk, because if you voice your issues, then you get noticed. If you don't, if you just treat this as a, uh, a travel event, you know, we have to, we have to motivate those people. And, and there's a good difference in between motivation uh, and being inspired, you know. You can just inspire a person once, but motivation is very hard. You have to constantly motivate people. And that's where, you know, like all these organizations are there. I, you know, if, if they are hearing uh, me, you know, let's, let's create that resources. Let's create free Zoom account for people to hold the programs. Let's, 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 you know, let's uh, do it. That is what where we are lacking. Let's connect you, you and me connect, you know, let's do a program in Poland. You call me, I'll be there. You know, you call me in Africa, I'll be there. You call me in Uganda, I'll be there. It's that easy. It's that simple. But why aren't we doing it? Why aren't we breaking the ice? You know, that is the way we change the society. That is the way how we are going to be, 
you know, somewhere we are going to be leaders. Because it is, it is just like, uh, you know, till this day we are following people. We, we are just like following issues. And, and that, that is like limited us. Yeah, please, sorry. Okay, thank you a lot. That was a very bold input. Okay, and I'm seeing a hand uh, up. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Aisha from the Maldives. So uh, this is a very, very interesting session. Um, I'm not a youth anymore, but I'm sure I'll be carrying these opportunities you shared with the youth because I work, work with the youth community. I'm part of uh, the Women in Tech Maldives, which is a nonprofit organization, especially we focus on girls and women. Um, for us, um, uh, there are challenges in engaging youth in, um, especially in uh, policy making. Um, uh, I will a little bit highlight about the kind of work that we do, and then I will go straight to the question. So uh, we actually work um, on uh, developing capacity building um, for youth on uh, coding, things like digital literacy. So one of the key challenges that we face is uh, when it comes to youth, gender stereotyping still exists in the Maldives. And then uh, before we reach to the youth, we have to train the parents and the community. And that is one step that we are taking. And another part is even though we are focusing on girls and women, especially areas like cybersecurity, we include uh, capacity building for boys as well. Because girls cannot be safe if boys doesn't understand about the security threats and measures. And we have been doing this for uh, quite a long time. It's been like four years. And what we have observed is it's very hard um, to engage, to convince the policy makers that youth matters. Their, their ideas matters, whether they are from a very far, remote, very small population. There are things they can do in their island level, small, small islands. We are talking about two um, size of two kilometers. In an island, there can be 100, or some islands, 1,000. So um, my question to all the speakers today is, how do you actually formalize plans or how do you ensure that youth voices are heard during the decision making process at the national level? Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much uh, again for organizing another very uh, interesting session and I'll keep it short. Um, just coming back to you, I think there are so many passionate and motivated young leaders around here. Mm -hmm. But I want to challenge um, the perception or the point you made that we have the resources because, quite honestly, I still think that we're lacking the resources. There are so many young leaders um, who are motivated, who are not there for their CV, but for the, yeah, for the topic. Um, and so many who couldn't join us here. So I think we should um, rally our own delegations and members from, from the countries we're, we're from. Because when I look around in this room, and while it's fantastic to sit here with so many young, inspiring people, we're lacking the generation, of course, except for, for some, we're lacking the generation that is in charge mostly of the resources, um, especially when it comes to money. Um, so I think we should try to engage them even more. Um, and while it's superb that we have this discussion, I think we should not forget that it is voluntary work for most of us. Um, and even while it's not the main interest for many to have it on their CV, it's also important to uh, end up getting a job that pays afterwards. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Mm, thank you a lot for those two inputs. So maybe uh, now um, uh, we will give speakers opportunity to address uh, them both or one of them, and then uh, we will get also the other questions because I see some other hands. Well, I, I have something to say about the resources, for example. Uh, in the case of UTICF Uruguay, we don't have resources at all, and we use uh, the, some of the Zoom that we have for other organizations. So we mount a Zoom, we found a place in the university that is a, a, a free room. <laughs> so you, you put some posters, do Facebook uh, advertisement, but not the paid one, and you can have your own UTICF meeting uh, with no resources. You can also collaborate with the other youth initiatives around the world to be speakers at your session, so the people will be motivated to see different faces also. So that, that are some of the examples that 
uh, because, uh, <coughs> sorry about that, I al always hear about funding and lack of funding, but it's, it's about passion, as you say, it's like, if you have the, 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 the person resources, the university facilities, and you can, you can do it, it's, I think it's no resources, but yes, resources is a, is a good thing for having, I don't know, booklets, more dissemination, to have a more strong thing, but it, that is not something that blocks you to, to do action. Can I say something? Sure. Um, so, uh, no, just uh, some um, quick remarks uh, about uh, about the last intervention. Uh, um, I wasn't talking. The, um, I, I didn't mean the, I didn't mean that uh, young people are lazy, or you know, uh, there is uh, widespread. Uh, um, widespread problem, the fact that most of them are, uh, they are doing this for volunteering, as a volunteering staff activities and none of them, you know, um, tend to engage and commit uh, their time on that. Um, I'd like just to say that uh, we are all here and we are here with a great motivation to do what we do. I'm the chair of the youth standing group. Uh, I'm the first woman uh, to be chairing uh, the, the youth standing group. And it, you know, it's, 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 it's a job. This is a job. I mean, uh, I spend at least six hours a day doing, um, uh, doing things for, for my organization, even if this is a volunteering activity. Um, what I'd like to say is uh, that the youth standing groups is open to collaboration. Uh, as, as I said before, the youth standing group uh, is the group of, the in, the, of young people of the Internet Society. The Internet Society is a non-profit organization uh, based in America, in the United States and Geneva. We have funding to carry out some activities and we are open to partnership with the other youth organization and non-youth organization in internet governance. So uh, I'm not there to leave you my contacts, but Joao is the vice president and, uh, you know, it, you can reach out to him and uh, we can, you know, start a discussion and collaboration and partnership. I'm, I'm very open to that. Thank you for your feedback, uh, Mr. from uh, Nepal, right? Yeah, so uh, uh, you said everything is okay. I mean, uh, it fits for all of us. So, and also as an Ethiopian and the, con I mean, <laughs> as an Ethiopian and uh, an African, also the global citizen, I face those things as well. So I know there are users who are in different continents who are facing the same things. Even if that I in, in third world is, so there might be someone in Poland and someone in, in Eastern Europe, they face the same thing. So I would like to just a recommendation, what I to say is, I was in a volunteer for the last 10 years and uh, where I started when I was in high school, a beginner. So uh, it was uh, challenging, like when you have an, a volunteer, so you, know, you should have your pay, paying to the transportation to go somewhere else for the cancer societies or uh, you may be people who are having uh, uh, daily foods, whatever, so preparing things. So you maybe have a depth to read uh, something. So it's a lot of things, but being a passionate, it doesn't make you who you are. I mean, it doesn't mean that you are good. So uh, when you have any things like as a passion, passion without commitment is not a being, uh, I mean, is not a good thing. So I was committed for, uh, that I challenge it, even if that I paid for my universities and uh, a lot of things that I've been done and volunteering and I did not waste on my, my time of one of the third of my age of in life. So I wasted in different uh, activities. So that makes me passionate to be now. So I, I didn't know when I go in a, for the first conference that I've been hearing is 
uh, Agenda 2063 in Africa. Everyone says that Agenda 20. So what is it? And I try to I get back to home, and then I read a lot of things, and then I had any responsibilities because the leaders they give you, a, they give you a decision. I mean, they just a decision. So who will be implemented? As a youth, we have to have a passion, but we should have an action on commitment. So if a passion without commitment it doesn't give a sense. So let's ask uh, those uh, passions and commitment and so that we can be a global citizen as well as who you are. So that was my advice. Thank you. Thank you a lot. And I saw uh, rising the hand on the this side of the floor. Yeah, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, my name is Giovanna. I'm here as part of the Brazilian Youth Delegation, and I come from Brazil, from, from Rio, and I would just like to point out something maybe related to what you, you mentioned. Um, I think we have a big challenge of being heard by national policymakers. I think the fact that we are here at IGF discussing and meeting, meeting each other and so on, this is already a progress, but of course it's uh, still a big challenge. But there are many factors involved, including luck, including who is the policymaker you're going to be talked to and so on. But most importantly than all that, I think we cannot treat um, the lack of financial resources and of funding in a naive way and we need to speak what is necessary for like we to be here, right? We need funding and it's not only about motivation because it's easy to say that we only need motivation when we have time, we have food, we have family and a nice place to go to sleep, but that's not the majority of the youth and maybe this is why we cannot see many engaged youth. You know, we need to talk about the problems as they are, and of course this is a complex issue, but it worries me that when we start talking more about motivation and about commitment and less about what the, the real means, the financial means and res of resources that requires for us all to be here. Right, we are in Ethiopia, it was not easy for us to come here. Many of us are needing to watch us online. So I just wanted to, to point out and then maybe completing um, what Male said, I say like passion, commitment, engagement, but also resources. We need to keep pushing the authorities and um, local, regional and global bodies to keep funding um, youth initiatives and also civil society organizations that could um, enable youth people to participate in internet governance. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Uh, I see that uh, two of our speakers has their hands up, so maybe we'll take one more comment uh, or question and then uh, I will pass the floor to our speakers. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, my name is Ochuke and I'm from uh, the Nigeria um, IGF. Yeah, so uh, she actually said uh, almost what I want to say. I wanted to speak from the perspective of, of youth from countries that do not necessarily have it as easy as some other countries do. And then uh, I wanted to say uh, this stage, being a youth, is a very, very sensitive part of, of, of life, yeah? And uh, for youth from countries such as mine, where I'm sorry to say, but even the internet is not the first priority for youth from a country such as mine. So when we talk about youth en engagement, we, there are some underlying issues that we have to look at before we can get improved youth engagement. I would say uh, I'm from Nigeria. I don't think I've seen any other youth from my country except those that volunteered to be part of UNECA. And that also comes down to the issue of funding. So what I just wanted to say that uh, while we all know that this is um, extremely uh, volunteering, it's also extremely hard for a youth that cannot really, really take care of himself to volunteer for something that is not the first priority in his country. And even when he's treated like that with the government, but now we're starting to change with, with uh, uh, what some uh, organizations in the government are doing, uh, trying to bring in the youth into the IGF. And I will see it's quite evident in the Nigeria IGF. For example, I'm the program manager of the NRI in my country. And 
I'm a young I'm a young person. So it's it's it's, it's good that they are trying to do this thing. So I'd just like to make some recommendations and, and I would just like to um us to discuss if it's possible for uh, us as the youth on the IGF to create a pool that the youth can benefit from. And when I say a pool, I mean the, there are so many big tech, so many organizations that actually gain the most from the youth. Can they give back by creating a pool that only the youth can benefit from when it comes to internet governance? And then this pool will also uh, enable uh, more jobs internationally, enable more resources for youth from underserved areas, and also ultimately improve the youth engagement from underserved areas. So thank you very much. Thank you a lot. And uh, now I will pass the floor to uh, Athena, who has her hand up, our online speaker. Thank you very much, Emilia. I just wanted to build up on the conversation we're having right now because I think we're raising a lot of important factors, but I think we should also uh, reflect on our way we organize ourselves as youth organizations. Because I think this is also a big challenge, the way we decide to organize ourselves, the way we decide to operate, and the danger also of replicating structures which are similar to what we've seen around us and which are clearly failing us. So I think it's also like we have a strength as youth, of, uh, as, youth as being more, let's say, digitalized in a sense for some of us and for having access to technologies that will allow us to connect with one another. But how in the way we organize ourselves can we actually uh, avoid to replicate problematic structures? And how can we actually um, build structures which, um, yes, which serve us on the long term, I think. And even uh, having shared this uh, opinion with other Generation Connect members, I know it's something that it's not clear yet. Um, there's not one way of achieving, you know, um, youth engagement and we're all pivoting and trying to find ways to make our voice heard and as we said like there are a lot of barriers but i think sometimes that the way we can organize ourselves can be the main barrier so i just wanted to share this thought and um and hope that we could actually share a lot of good practices on how we we can go further together thank you uh, thank you a lot, Athena. And now I'm passing floor to Veronica, who also has her hand up. And this is also a quick reminder that we are heading to the end of the session. So uh, please uh, be brief. Yes, thank you. Yes, a very quick uh, remark on what Gervana said uh, from Brazil. Um, her comment was very spot on. It doesn't apply only to a country like Brazil or a developing or undeveloped country. Um, it, in terms of, uh, of funding, we all have issues. Uh, I wasn't able to travel to Ethiopia uh, because of uh, job commitment, but also because I didn't get uh, any travel support. And ironically, uh, I'm not eligible to get travel support uh, because I come from a developed country. So uh, my question, uh, my question, my comment uh, would be, um, do we, uh, do we also have to consider that even young people that come comes from come from developed country have issues with uh, with funding? It's not because you know they are come from a rich richer country they have more opportunities. That's that's not true at all. And also talking about uh, you know um, the, the possibility to engage uh, in this kind of discussions uh, at policy level because we are at a UN event at high level event um, but we need to make an impact in our own territory in our own nations and for me ironically is much more easy to be involved at this level than a national level because in in Italy uh, they made this youth council youth parliament in Europe we have the youth European parliament but from as an Italian delegate, they always choose people from higher, middle, uh, middle class, uh, middle class, you know, uh, 
people from not who, who have studied in private schools and private university uh, isn't that fair do we have uh, the same um, chances uh, to to actually contribute at policy level do we need you know do we have to have the same possibility in terms also of funding but also in in terms of chances the the possibility to have access to uh, to those to those program or to those events i think it the the response is yes and uh, that's something that we need regardless of our geographical provenance and uh, uh, the 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 country we were born and raised in mm. Thank you, uh, Veronica. Uh, I think these are really good questions, with which would be also very hard to answer, actually. Um, we are heading to the end of our session, so unfortunately we'll have time uh, just for one more comment. And we had our online uh, moderator, Jenna, with her uh, hand up. So, uh, Jenna, please uh, have your brief comment. Sure. Uh, I would just like to highlight that uh, this is really uh, a first of all discussion from pointing motivations and to all the factors that youth as well as youth organizer or youth leaders are facing in in, um, in the process of, you know, and encouraging more youth participation for internet governance discourse. I would just like to add a few, co like a few comments from the Dynamic Coalition main session that I just had previous like prior to this session and I think it is a very important message that we identify with the other dynamic coalitions um, in, in terms of the goals, common goals and common purpose that we can do with other stakeholders in the coming years. Um, two things that, uh, that we highlight was tangible outputs are very important and um, in terms of tangible output I believe there is lots of um, um, there's a lot of things that we still need to work on. Of course, Veronica uh, mentioned about the booklet. This is like the tangible outputs that is leading the youth community to to um, to a point where we are kind of catching up to um, other stakeholders in the community because to a certain extent, we need some kinds of formality in order to uh, get our work re recognized. I think uh, we have improved so much comparing to the youth meetings three years ago in Berlin. We have more initiative in terms of having more capacity building um, webinars and other working group that help us to stay more engaged um, in the IGF uh, community. But uh, continuations and consistent participants also important. Of course, we mentioned about job opportunities or time commitment, these are all the constraints that that um, stop us from actively participating. But I believe um, with meetings like this today, uh, we'll continue to uh, make progress because um, outputs is not necessary to be a solution, but the progress and the process itself can also be part of the output. Uh, just one last thing to highlight, most of us are also uh, members of the current cohort of the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance, and I believe it's a really good platform for people like us who really want to stay engaged in um, encouraging youth participation and engagement in Internet Governance, as well as um, uh, working on the goals in achieving um, the area focus that we stated in IGF plus as well as the global digital compact um, I highly encourage all of us to stay connect uh, through that platform because we have that DC here don't waste it um, that's it for me and thank you so much for all the other speakers as well as all the participants uh, for your contribution I may now pass the time back to Amelia thank you Thank you a lot, Jenna, and I would like to close this session with saying a big thank you to all the panelists, to our online moderator, Jenna, 
and to the audience for being so active and for bringing so many insights on the table. Uh, I think that we definitely could have a longer discussion. There is always not enough time on the, during the sessions of this kind. But I'm really glad that we could all meet here today and have this debate. And uh, I would also like to mention that if any of you is not in our youth group, Youth in Addis Ababa on Telegram, in which we are sharing opportunities, please go to Joao again, <laughs> and he, he will tell you how to be added. Thank you. That's the that's the that's the passion. That's no, the passion. You don't need resources. You have no, no, no. You, you find it. You need resources. Uh, you know, I mean to say yes. That is the reason why you know. Uh, it's because it's, it's a way no, to get yes. more engaged. So true. So true. It is very difficult for the youth. We do understand. But the passion is very important. Passion is very important. That drives you. I meant when I meant the motivation. It is money. You know, like you you you. There are groups that that give you some. Uh, you know, awards and stuff, those are very important. That's why all these organizations...